two, amen. God bless you on this Sunday morning, amen. We are, there is a word from Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, if you don't mind. Deuteronomy 31, amen. Give, a, give this music team, amen, another hand. Amen. I love how their voices blend so well together. Amen. It does remind me of unity in the building. Amen. 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 And amen. Deuteronomy 31, verses 6 through 8. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 31, verses 6 through 8. And the word of God reads, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Amen. And this is in reference to black history and the names that have been read. Amen. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee, nor will he forsake thee. Amen. Verse 7. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all of Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for though thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt call them, cause them to uh, inherit it. Verse 8. And the Lord... He it is that doth doeth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Amen. So much for what our uh, ears have heard on this Sunday morning, Lord God. So much praise to you. Father God, it's so sad then uh, in another way, Lord God, and when I hear the names, Lord God, of those that have been just shot down, Lord God, just, just brutally killed, Lord God, I get sad, I get angry, Lord God, I, I try not to focus on it too much because it will take me out of character of what you calls me or want me to be, Lord God, and so. But Father, I'm reminded this morning of how your words say that, Lord God, you told me to fear not. You told us to fear not. Lord God, that you will be with us, Father. We thank you that you are God, not, you are not like man, that you are alive. So if the word said it, Lord God, then I can hang my hat on it. Lord God, and I thank you for being with us. Even though these were dreaded times, Lord God, and even still today is dreaded times, Lord God, I know that you still have your watchful eye on us. And Father, we thank you now again for how you are with us and how you're going to be with us through this word. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and ask it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you will. Amen. And this is the last of the series. And always God, and always God, he is always with us, amen. Do you believe that on this Sunday morning, amen? Do you believe that God is a God that is always with us, amen? And as I stated in my prayer, amen, that the times that uh, we actually have gone and witnessed a lot of times, as I said, I wanted the names read individually because I don't want us to forget, amen, the things, amen, that have happened in our history, amen. And I believe someone said that there was, I think it was Amelia said something about Dr. King said, we can't forget them. We have to remember things. And then when those of us that have not been harmed by situations, a lot of times we have a tendency to believe that it ain't about us, it's all about them. Amen? Amen. But we need to be reminded again this Sunday morning that for one of us to die, I think, uh, I'm not really sure who said this, uh, uh, but at any rate, I believe it went something like this. It said for one of us, if uh, somebody comes to, to against the freedom of one of us, they'll come to the, against the freedom of all of us. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, you know, we here in the United States, we can bury our heads in the sand. Amen. And act like we don't have nothing to do with what's going over in Ukraine. Amen. But how many of you know that that is an attack against freedom? Amen. And if you if, let me let me tell you something, if you don't know. If Putin gets Ukraine, you can get a slap T. He coming for the United States. Amen. Because Putin is about having, amen, control. Amen. Don't want to get off too far into that. But I do want to remind you of this this 
morning that no matter what age you are, amen, you can be a young baby, amen, you can be a young child, amen, you can be a young adult, and old adult, we've seen them kill from 94 all the way down, I believe, to four years old. I'm reminded also of a young man, amen, I had the privilege of talking to his mother that rode in the car of a, of a man right here.
I'm always with you. Amen. Let me tell you about this. We serve a God who will go before us. Amen. We serve a God who can be with us. Amen. We serve a God who is behind us. Amen. But this God says that I am a God who is always with you. Amen. So we need to be mindful of the things that we say about each other. We need to be mindful of the way we treat each other. Amen. Because we got a God who ain't never leaving us. Amen. So everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that come out your mouth, there's a God that is with us, that hears it, and he's recording it in the book of life. Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we better know, we better understand who it is we are claiming ourselves to be and who it is we are serving. Amen. 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 I'm reminded, amen, of this week. Amen. Going along. You know, I'm excited about next week coming in because it's a week of no complaining. Amen. But I'm also reminded, amen, that last week, for the last two weeks, people that are calling getting phone calls from Florida, getting phone calls from North Carolina, getting phone calls from everywhere, saying, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Will you please pray for me? Amen. Amen. But uh, and, and, and the thing is, is that these people, amen, are telling me that either they are a part of the church or they are not a part of the church. But I wonder, and I ask this question, then why is it you are having to call me for prayer? Now, I don't mind praying for them. Let's get that understood. But the bottom line is I want to know where your pastor And why are you calling me? Amen. Why it is that you think I am one that can get a prayer through? Amen. But I want you to know that somebody somewhere watches what you do. Somebody somewhere watches what you say. And sometimes your name will go ahead of you and it'll be in a testimony of saying, call on this individual. Call out that individual because they are with God. They are walking with God. They are talking with God. And they can get a prayer through. If you want your situation handled, if you want your situation taken care of, Always with us. We are looking at the chapter 3rd, Deuteronomy 31, the chapter of uh, where it talks about Marcus. I'm getting some kind of feedback that's in my mic. I, I, I don't know what is going on, but I need you to take care of it. Amen. And if you can't, then just let me know and I'll deal with it some kind of way. Listen, but these, this chapter is written to the children of Israel, amen, as they were getting ready to go across the Jordan River into the promised land. How many of you know that we have been promised some things, amen? Amen. 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 And these children, amen, were getting go ready to go across. Now Moses could not go, and so Moses was telling them how they were all, they ought to be, amen, when, uh, as Joshua gets ready to take them across the promised land. It says here, let me, let me get here, okay, because this is messing with me. This is messing with me. Amen. Know this. Know this. It is not meant for everybody to cross over Jordan Amen. at the same time. Some have to go before others. Amen. Or some later than others. But only God gets to say when that person will go. Amen. Yeah. What are you talking about, Pastor? So I'm saying here that in reference to those that have already been snuffed out, Black Lives Matter, some younger than I, us, the bottom line is they have crossed over what we know to be the Jordan River. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. You better, you better come on, talk about it. Because Jordan River, listen, that was going up to Jerusalem. Amen. Anytime you, you talk about going Jordan or going up to Jerusalem, all you are talking about really is going into heaven. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. You're going into heaven. Amen. Amen. So all of us can't go and 
at the same time. Point one, point one, and go back to verses three and four. I'm going to point you back there. God always goes before us. Let's read verses three and four. Don't ever close your Bible because I'm going to try to stay Bible bound. Amen. Don't do the wrong me. Amen. Let me turn it around and go back over here. 31. Amen. Lost my Bible place. Amen. God bless you. 3 and 4. It says this. Oh, come on, Bible. It says his 31. 3 says, The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations before thee. And thou shalt possess them, and Joshua shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. In other words, he said the leader always got to lead. Amen. Amen. The leader always go before the congregation. Amen. The pastor goes before the congregation. But before the pastor is God. Amen. God is going over before thee. Amen. For verse 4 says, And the Lord shall do unto them as he did in Sihon and of all kings of the Amorites and unto the land of them who he destroyed. Amen. What are you talking about? Amen. Amen. Now we are talking about dying and going over and crossing over into Jordan. Amen. But I want to stay right here in the moment. Amen. If you don't mind. Amen. And sometimes, amen, there are things that God called for us to do because he want to give us something. Amen. But he goes before you. See, let me tell you something. A lot of us think that we are going through some stuff. But the truth of it is, you ain't really going through all you can go through. What are you talking about? Because we just read in the book that God goes before us and destroys some of our enemies before they even attack us. What are you talking about? Yeah, he can attack all of them. Yeah, he can destroy all of them. But the bottom line is, he's going to leave something for us to do. Let he create a way. Amen. Uh -huh. You see, we don't want to 
engage in life for fear something might happen to us. Amen. Amen. But Charles will tell you, I'm a bona fide fool. I don't care. I will step out, get in trouble, and turn back in like Peter. You remember when Peter stepped out? There you go, Holy Spirit. You remember when Peter stepped out on the water and said, Bid me, Jesus, to come to you. So I will step out on some water. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm drowning out here. Yes, sir. But I'm Peter. I'm strong. Try. Try. Because I believe. The truth of it is, sometimes he will let you go down to let you see where your faith is. Why? Because he already knows you ain't nothing but a bunch of hands. Yes, yeah. And sometimes you just have to go and acknowledge, yeah, Lord, I was bluffing, I was bluffing. <laughs> but I'm not here, what you gonna do? Because yeah. <laughs> if I drown, guess what? You gonna drown. You remember how the children of Israel
saying once in the New Testament, the word of God tells us he's going to be with us. He says his name is Emmanuel, and I'm a God that's going to be with you. Amen. Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 7 and uh, sorry, 7, 14, 8 and 8, 8 and 10. Amen. He says that I am a God who will be with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. Matthew 1, 22 and 23 supports this scripture. It says God is a God who is always with us. He says we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear not. Do we have to be, nor do we have to be afraid. Not everything in life that happens to us is right. Listen to me. Not everything that happened to us in life is right. But God said he is with us and you can believe that that which we don't think is right is really serving a purpose. It serves a purpose. Uh-huh. Why? Because Romans tell me this. All things work together for the good of those that are called the Lord are called according to his purpose. Amen. So what I think ain't right, you better understand it's right.
you stand, please? Down on the thing you have You know, every Sunday after pastors and ministers threw us through the word, someone gets up and opens the doors of the church to invite those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior into their life. And you might ask yourself, why do we do that every Sunday? We do it because we don't know the hearts yeah. and the souls of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But God does. So he tells us to extend the invitation. Yeah. Because he doesn't want anyone left behind. Nobody. Even when we extend the invitation for discipleship, and we extend the invitation for those who come forward to join the church. Yeah. But we're extending the invitation for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Again, because we don't want anyone left behind. Amen. Although the doors are always open, it's still fit for us to let you know that Jesus is He's knocking at the door of your heart. Going to come in. So invite him in. Ask him. Lord, come in. Why? So when that time comes, there won't be no doubt in your mind where you're going. Where you can spend eternity. Is there anyone today that wants to give their life to Christ? Or is there anyone today that wants to join us here in Macedonia?